Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and we are Let's Make Art and we letter a new project every week together and I help guide you from the beginning to the end. So this week what we were doing is this guy. And I'm really excited about it. This is one that um, a lot of you in our group have been talking about what flourishes are and I'm excited to be able to tell you what that's all about. So the supplies that we're doing are Oh, I'm gonna flip this over for Keenan. There are three different brush pen colors. So these are the pens that we have in our subscription box. If you don't have them, you can use any colors you want, but I suggest using a green and then maybe a few lighter colors to accent. So you can see that I use them here. So the three that I'm using are, this is a really pretty, it's a sage color, but it's actually called asparagus. So 192, Brock loves that name. <laughs> Um, 026, this is yellow gold, and then 993, which looks like yellow, but it's called chrome orange. So those are the three that I'm going to be using, and then we have some practice paper that I'll be going through as well. This is in your kit, or if you don't have our kit, they also, you can get them, or our box, you can get them online on our website, go to the lettering page, and then go to the kit and find this project. Those will be there. And then have that, the paper that the final project is on, you'll notice it's a thicker cardstock. So what I'm using is Bristol paper. And then just a pencil and an eraser, and then you're all set to go. So those are the supplies. Then for the project, there are five different steps I'm gonna be doing. So the first one is, actually I'm gonna talk to the camera and explain this. There, the first one is, we're gonna be learning about flourishes. So I'll go into a little bit more detail about what that is if you have no idea what I'm talking about. Step one. Step two is, I just want you to start. So I think a lot of times people get overwhelmed and you don't know where to start or what to do. I want you to just use your pencil and just draw it out how you normally do. So I'll go through that. Then the third step is I'll show you different spots of where you can add flourishes. So there's some things that you can keep in mind of and look for. So that's the third step. The fourth step is we're gonna, what's the fourth step? I was gonna say lay it out, we already did that. Um, is doing the brush pen. And then the fifth step is adding details and I'll show you how to add a shadow and how you can add some leaves to accent your lettering. So the first thing is, let me move all this. Use this guy. So if you're, this is the practice sheet that I said that you can grab out. So when you're looking at this, first of all, I'm gonna have you look exactly at the project that we're gonna be doing. And you can see there are different curves right here that are added. I'm gonna use this hand so you can see. So right here. So what's happening is those are, I like to call them extend, or they're extensions of the letters. So they're not, you're not doing different letters. You're just extending it. Sometimes they're loops. Sometimes they're just a little curl. So those are what are called flourishes. So they're just extensions or decorations of your letters. The basic idea of it is you're drawing this curved shape. And so what I did for the first one is I drew, um, it's like an infinity sign. And so when you're doing this, what I suggest to do is, I'm gonna grab out. So you can either use computer paper or you can use marker paper if you have marker paper. I'll just use marker paper, or computer paper for now. Um, so what I want you to do is draw, you can do it with a pencil or your brush pen, whatever you feel comfortable with, is I want you to just draw this motion. So I'm just gonna draw infinity signs over and over. For infinity. For, to infinity, to infinity oh, and beyond. Oh, maybe we're not supposed to say that. No, we love Buzz Light. I know. Okay. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. So draw an infinity sign, keep going, and this will help with your hand motions. So there's a couple things that you can think about as we're doing this. You can either choose to, if you notice this is different and my hand is levitated a little bit versus this where I'm grounded and I'm just using my wrist. So experiment and see what you like. What I want you to keep in mind with is when you're doing this, there will be different times where we'll go over this more detail, but if you're doing a longer stroke, you might not be able to stay grounded. Um, so see which one feels more comfortable for you for now. But I just tend to stay grounded. So again, draw different infinity signs, keep going. It doesn't matter what shape of them, you can draw really big infinity signs if you want. 
Um, and then once you do that and you kind of warm up your hand, you will notice there are different flourishes that I did. So you can choose where you start. Do you start up here and you draw it like that and you come around or do you start down here? So um, you can draw directly on this or you can use practice paper. I'm gonna draw a direct on here. So I drew an arrow to show the direction to go in. So when I'm doing this, is I'm gonna take it all in one stroke. So practice doing it all in one stroke and see, maybe draw a few underneath. So you will notice that these are thin strokes. So if you've been with us or if you haven't, it's totally fine. If um, What I want to explain to you is that with lettering, the concept is thin on the up, thick on the down, which I'm sure if you've been with us, you've heard me say a lot. Um, however, right now you'll notice I'm going horizontal. So. The answer is you can decide, like anything, you can decide what you want it to look like because this is your own creation. Um, I tend to make horizontal lines thinner than thicker. So don't worry too much about the amount of pressure that you're using with your brush pen. I just want you to get more comfortable with the stroke and your hand motion rather than focusing on is this too thick, is it too thin? So don't worry about that. Um, so that's one. And then you will notice the difference between this and this is that I just extended and I drew a little curve to start out with first. So this one you can try out and I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do a little curve, a little curl, and then go like that. So those are a few different ways. And then what you can do is you can take it the opposite. So if I start and my curls at the bottom, my flourish, I'm gonna start down here. Instead I'm gonna go up and around like that. So then I want to show is these guys. These flourishes are a little bit different. So this is common for the crossing of the T. And also if you want, especially which you'll, I'll show more later, but you can decide which way. If you want to start over here, you can. Instead of starting from left to right, you can go to right to left. Uh, totally personal preference. But what I wanted to show was now I'm going to show this type of floor. So this is common and you'll see this on our B. So it's the beginning of this B. So instead of just having a straight line for my B, we're adding little flourish. You will notice that all of these shapes are, ex or these flourishes are extensions of our foundation strokes. So our foundation strokes is um, this PDF is on the fourth of our beginner lettering series. So you can go through that if you haven't done that so far. I really hi I highly recommend that. Um, but you will notice is that these are all different shapes. So this is literally the same J just with an extension or a flourish. But this one is also, um, where is it? It's kind of like this guy. So they're kind of, they're a morphed of different versions of it. So that, this is good practice if you want to start with that. Then I'm gonna show you, okay. So on these guys, I'm gonna go thin on the up and I'm gonna stay thin. And then I'm gonna do that stroke, my thick on the down. So then if I were to do a B like that. So you will notice now on this one, I did think about my thin and thick. So I went thin and then I went thick. So I'll do it one more time. So thin on the up and then I came around and then I did my thick down stroke. One thing that I do want to show is that as you're doing this, how do I say this? I want you to be aware of when you are putting pressure. If you ever feel like, and I've talked about this in some of our Q and A's, um, but I want to mention it here because all of these are curves. And so if you ever feel like your brush pen is getting smushed, think about when you are putting the pressure. So what I mean by that is if you are pushing here, your brush pen might do that. So if you see, Keenan, can you do a close up of that one? Yes, so I can. Then on the up, if I push too early, my brush pen smushes, and it, that was a very big exaggeration, <laughs> but it smushes like that rather than if I, so it's, the difference is waiting there, which I don't recommend. Instead, what I'd like you to do is go thin on the up, wait till you're over the hump, and then you start to push. So right here. 
So those are a couple things that will help you as you are going through this to feel comfortable and get to know this brush pen. Things are everywhere. Um, so I'll do it one more time. So then on the up, then across, and then I'm gonna wait till I'm over this hump and then I'm gonna push. So that will help you with that. The same is, or this, it's uh, the same concept of being aware and mindful of your pressure, um, but you're gonna go the opposite way. So on this one, we're gonna go thick on the down, whereas this we started thin on the up. So this is literally, like I said, this foundation stroke just with an added flourish. So that's what's cool is that flourishes are essentially, like I said, just extensions of your letters. So thick on the down, I'm gonna wait a little bit, thin on the up. So instead of going thick on the down and pushing, and if I wait too long, my brush pen is just mushing like that, and then I come up, it makes that weird, well, and there's too much or er, color right there. But, so, do one more time. Two things, you can either, that might also be happening is if you wait too, or if you think about it too late. Um, so what I want you to do is think about it as rounding a corner. So instead of, you wouldn't go to a, a, cor or, um, a curb when you're driving and just do a hard stop. So I want you to kind of think about it and guide it. So instead I'm gonna go thick on the down, slowly get to the tip, and then come around. So it has that more natural look. Or if you'll notice, this it has a little bit thicker at the bottom. I, I'm teaching you this because I want to show you if you're getting frustrated on your own. But I also wanna preface that the beauty of lettering is that it doesn't need to be perfect. So I think that I don't want, you, or I know, I don't want you to get hung up on this so much. I just wanna be able to give you guys any tools that I've learned and pass it on to you. So that's just one thing to think about. So I'm gonna do this one more time. So this flourish, what we're learning is extending this guy and adding a curve to the end. So I'm gonna go thick on the down, slowly get to the tip, come around. So my hand is grounded because I feel more comfortable with that. So this is common on, obviously it's a J, it's the end of a Y um, as well. Final flourish before we get into the project is this guy. This one, I've done in a few projects, but this one I did, I decided to add it in this negative space, which I'll go over in a little bit, um, and I extended it below this letter. So this one is we're gonna go in the opposite direction. So we're gonna go thick on the down and then thin across. If your hand starts to shake, do this stroke a lot because it might happen and I even feel myself, it's not, especially going that way, it's not a natural movement, so it's okay if you shake. If you've had coffee, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe wait an hour <laughs> or just very concentrate, um, but it's okay if you shake, it's normal. Um, just continue to move that mov movement and that's why we're doing these practice strokes to gain that muscle memory. So again, thick on the down, I'm gonna go thin across and I'm gonna make this curve a little bit bigger. So like that. Okay, that is step one. So getting to know your flourishes. Then step two is the just start step. So we have, I'm gonna leave this out for reference. Um, this is the other template that if you have our box, is, it's in there. It's essentially just four lines that I drew. So if you don't have this, you can also make your own and just use a ruler. But what happens is that I wanted to give you guys a guideline to set you up for making this project. So if you notice when you're looking at this, it is not on a straight line. Everything is slanted a little bit. And so it just creates some variance in your look. So I wanna give you different options that you can play with. Um, to start though, I think it's overwhelming if you're looking at this and you're like, I don't even know where to start. So that's why we're here for you, to break it down and show you. So what I want you to do is grab your pencil and take, you can also do a different quote if you don't want to do this quote, but we're just gonna do bloom where you're planted. And so, what happens is that I decided this was the layout that I wanted to do. So I did, each line has its own word, but then you are, are such, they're smaller words, so I decided to do it side by side. So what I want you to do, where's the other thing? Okay, 
Nicole, will you do a hair flip for us? Thank you. Thank you. That's Keenan guiding me. <laughs> Not just being like my... Hey, move your hair. <laughs> um, okay. Wow, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Just start. Sorry about the hair. <laughs> it's okay. It's good. I'm glad you told me. We want this to be a good experience for everyone. Okay. Bloom. So I'm going to just draw out my, my words. When you are doing this, you have the option to design this however you want, like all the time. A couple of things I want you to think about as you're doing this. I decided to make all my letters standing up straight and down so they're all like this, which if you want to mix it up, where is that? We went over angles in the stop wishing start doing project a few weeks ago. Um, so you can also reference that if you want to practice drawing at an angle. So this is a guideline from that project that you can get if you wanted to. So that's an example of, do it here. Instead of straight up and down, if you wanted to angle your letters. So that's something you can experiment with if you want to do that. So that versus that. Uh, okay, bloom. So again, I'm not thinking about any of the flourishes or the extensions. I'm just drawing it out how I normally would. Bloom where? <coughs> um, you will see that you might have to, if you're not comfortable with cursive, it's okay if you have to rewrite it a few times um, just to get the spacing out. You don't have to go all the way to the edges. These are just a rough guideline if you want to. Okay, where you, oops. Is this dark enough, Keenan, or do I need to write darker? It's a little light. Okay, I'll draw darker. And so I realized that this got a little bit further, so I need to erase this anyways. So, okay, you said draw darker. I mean, I said it was a little light. I did, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job. <laughs> no, you're here to guide me. You're not telling me what to do, you're here, you're guiding me. Okay, bloom where you are. So another thing you can think about is, another project that we went over was the one of a kind, and I talked about the shapes of letters. So you can experiment with if you want to make these letters. These are more circular, but if you want to make them more oval, actually it's kind of a mix. These are more oval. You can experiment with shapes if you want to as well. Uh, you are planted. Okay. So that is the first step. Like I said, just start. I just want you to lay it out. Don't think about anything else. And then step three is now, once you have this, this is your foundation, now you can take a step back and look at things and think about where to add the flourishes. So I say this a lot when I teach, and I want you to be mindful about things. Um, I think, especially with lettering, we're, we just want to get it done. We want to make it, one, perfect, but then two, we just tend to do cursive or just however we handwrite. And I debunk that myth in one of the beginning lettering series. Um, but I really want you to just take a practice of t removing yourself from being like this in tunnel vision and taking a step back and looking at where you can add your flourishes. So I noticed that when I ha ever have a hard stop like that right here, that is a perfect time to just add a flourish. And what I'm looking at is how can I mimic this shape right here, right here and then add it to my B. So I'm gonna do a similar thing and I'm gonna take this guy and add it. So all I'm doing is adding that shape and just extending it. So you can decide, do you want this to be exactly the same? Maybe I make this a little bit like that. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect, but the idea is that you are creating and why I talked about it in the shapes project, but you're creating your lettering to be different shapes. So you're thinking of this at a, as a harmonious type of um, feeling that you're creating rather than these jagged edges and everything being wonky and too much to look at. Because the other thing with flourishes is you don't want to go too much, otherwise it might not look like a letter anymore. So that defeats the purpose. Okay, that's one start. Another one is, so 
Actually, on all of the beginnings of these letters, I'm going to add a flourish. So the other one is right here. So this is another just hard stop right here. So what we could do is what if we just add a curl like that right there? Um, then I'm going to do the same thing here. on this one. So the P, you will notice there's a few different ways you can do P's. So I notice that I have a hard stop here and right here. So a few things that you can think about is do you, P's you can do several different ways. You can either go like that and make that one stroke or maybe you just add the flourish right there and it goes like that. So those are, or you could just add Maybe you add a little curve right there if you want to play with that. I like to do my P's with a little loop because it also mimics the other shapes. So it mimics this shape and these sh other shapes that we're doing. So I'm also going to add a curl right here. And then I'm going to add a curl right there. So that's that one. Bloom where you are planted. Okay, so those are the beginnings. Then you can take another Thing that you can think about. So we have the beginnings and then we have the ends. So on this one, what I'm looking at is my eye, when I take a step back and I look at this, I see this negative space right here. And the reason why is because these shapes, I drew them kind of high, which it doesn't matter. But what I'm trying to say is that these are lower. So my X height is lower. So these lowercase letters are lower and I have all of the space that I can fill. So what you can do is another thing to think about is flourishes is not only are they extensions of your letters, but how can you use them to fill the space? So I see this negative space and I want to fill it. So I'm going to add a loop like that, which is our last guy here. So I added that to fill in that shape. So you also could, if you just wanted to add, you can just add a curl like that. But like I said, because I saw this negative space, I wanted to use that as an opportunity, my flourish to fill that space. Fancy. Fancy. That's another, yeah, flourish is fancy. Yeah, it is. It makes it look nice. Um, then, I, like I said, I don't want you to go crazy. So I know this is also, these are lower. I wouldn't do it every single one because you also, when you're looking at this, you want to create some variance. So if I were to do that on all of them, it might look too repetitive that your eye goes directly to it. So one thing that I don't, I want you to avoid is creating too much repetition that that's all you see and you lose the words, which is the whole point of it. So I'm deciding, you totally can, I'm just deciding for my personal preference as I'm not gonna add it to anything to these two, but I am gonna add it to this bottom one. And the reason why is because because I have this lower letter, which is the D sender, it's going below this line, I see all of this negative space. So I saw this negative space and then I saw this negative space. So I'm gonna use this same flourish and I'm gonna extend my D below and then add a curve like that. So beginning, end, all we have is the middle now. And so when you're looking at this, a few spots. One, I know that T's are always my favorite part to use a flourish. You can decide, are you a straight T or are you a curl T? Whichever one, which one are you, Keenan? Uh, it's hard to decide. <laughs> Cause I like how a straight T is clean. It is clean. But the flourish T, the curved T, it looks good. It does? Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> so you can decide. You don't have to add a flourish to your T if you don't want to. The cool thing is that there's, there's options. You can also make, if you just want a little T like that, you can also do that. But... It's cute. <laughs> Why I want to do a flourish sheet and make it longer is that I also see all this space that I could fill. So I'm going to draw. So again, you can decide, do you like this one or do you like this one? I'm going to draw the second one. And I, 
I saw you. <laughs> uh, like that. So you also don't have to go through the full extension if you want. Maybe you just make it a little bit shorter like that. I'm going to make this E a little bit shorter. Okay. Crossing of the T's. The other place that I see, so when I take a step back and I look, I don't know if you can see this, Keenan, but that is where my eye goes to. Do you see that? I do see that. Yeah. So, and the reason why I bring that up is because you can fill it and I love lettering because you can break the rules. Cursive is you're supposed to connect everything. It's supposed to be perfect. That's not what we're here to do. And what I want you to experiment with is, do you like this look is if you let go and you don't connect that, I would just bring these a little bit closer so it still looks like one word. So bring that there. Is what if I, so pretend that I didn't add a loop and pretend that it was just a straight line like that. Oh, you know what's cool, Keenan? I'm sure you'll appreciate this. I don't. Someone in our group called these, we called them pens, we called them eraser shavings, right? Yeah. She called them eraser poops. <laughs> eraser poops. <laughs> I was like, Keenan will love that if I say that. <laughs> I love that you thought of me when the joke came around. Well, you're a little kid at heart. Okay. That's true. <laughs> um, is again, going back to this spacing, as I see this spacing, so what you can do is, again, we can mimic this like we have here, and we can add it right here. So I'm going to fill this space with a loop like that. So then you don't have that space there anymore. Oh. You like? Um then this looks pretty good. So the last thing that you can think about, and these aren't necessarily flourishes because flourishes are kind of extensions of letters. I'm going to call it just an exaggeration of things. So what I mean by that is I tend to make my O's have this loop already. So you can choose to make them bigger if you want. And then the other thing is when I draw my R's is you can either draw your R, you might draw your R naturally like that. But what I tend to do is I see that I have some space up here. So that's why I drew a loop right here, but I'm actually going to just exaggerate it. I think the technical term is top knot. Top? Is that really? Or did you just make that up? <laughs> Uh, we talked about this, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, we have. Yes, we have. Oh, Miss Miss Frizzle? Clavel. <laughs> I thought of Miss Frizzle, even though it has nothing to do with it, Miss Frizzle. Okay, anyways, top knot. Draw a bigger loop so you're exaggerating it. I wouldn't, I'm trying to think where else you can do it. Some people also, if you want to draw a loop here, is you can draw your A like that. So those are just other places that you can experiment with this. I think otherwise, did I add anywhere else? We are good to go. So that was step three. Step four is, can you hand me my light box? Okay. Is we are going to now go to the brush pens. So if you have been with us. I've given a few life hacks if you don't have a light box. So I like to do, use a, do a light box because when I'm going to my final project, if I have this big piece of paper, one, you could do this pencil sketch all over it, but you also did a lot of hard work already. So why not just help yourself out and use this um, as your template? So that's what we were making. We were making our template. If you're using a light box, what I suggest doing is either drawing this really dark or you can draw with a, just a good old Sharpie and draw your strokes. Or, didn't connect that. Or you can use your darker color pen that you have, which for me is my green, <coughs> and use can use this as your time to practice your thin on the up, thick on the down. So those are options of things you can do. I think the letter F was Miss Clavel. 
but I don't know which one was Miss Frizzle. No, I think I just, I, wait, didn't I say Miss Frizzle? You did say Miss Frizzle, but I don't remember which one you said. <laughs> I can't remember either. Um, so those are just practice drawing your letters, or not practice, wow, Miss Frizzle threw me off. <laughs> just you're making your template this is all you're doing if you want to practice the reason why I said practice is if you want to practice your thin on the up thick on the down you can go through that here before you get to your final one so now we're ready to jam this is the fourth step um I'm going to tape down I'm just using blue painters tape you can use any tape that you have um, for this part, but I'm just going to tape this down so that I have, I'm going to draw this a little bit darker. Oh, I did want to mention is another spot, if you are doing a different quote, another great spot for another flourish, just because I thought about this and I want to show you, is the why you also sometimes you don't have to connect that. So practice paper. If you are drawing, let's draw the word, I can draw the word you again. Where is that? So if you don't have the, a letter blocking this, which is why I didn't do this, is this L comes up too high, so I can't do this. But if you don't, what you could do is you can draw and draw the same flourish and just draw it like that and then continue because like I said, you don't have to always connect your letters. I talk about this in the Mother's Day project. So this is another one I kind of go over flourishes, but I talk about this is creating a home for your letters. Um, so that's just another great place to add flourishes. But like I said, my L gets in the way, so I decided not to do that. And this is why lettering is such, you never know what you're working with, um, so it's not gonna be the same every time. So let me, finish adding. So again, I'm drawing my lines just so I can see through because Bristol paper is not see through. The life hack is if you don't have a light box, use a, I don't remember which one I showed doing this. I think it was one of the first ones. Use a baking dish, put it upside down. So it's the flat surface. The bottom is face up to you. And so you have a surface, put your phone on flashlight mode underneath, and then you have a light box. That's your life hack. It's more helpful if the baking dish is glass. If it's metal. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. It, you it, was probably, it was probably implied, but I thought I'd make a little joke. Oh, well, I would be so sad if someone tried that, and then I felt really bad for <laughs> making them do that. No yes, way. a clear thing clear glass dish, or you can use a window if you're okay lettering standing up. A window also works. Okay, so you will see that I can, well maybe you can't see. I don't know, can they see my lettering underneath? Yes, they can. Oh, okay, cool, so it's kind of I mean, bright. I can on this screen. Okay, perfect. So that's why I did this darker so that I can see. And I'm gonna center it a little bit. So I am using blue painters tape and I would recommend this type of tape or washi tape. Anything that isn't, um, when you remove it, going to rip your paper. Sarah has a great tip, which I actually haven't tried, but I bet it would work, is if you only have scotch paper, um, take the sticky part. Scotch paper? Sc scotch, did I say scotch that? Tape? Scotch tape and the sticky part and you just put it on your clothing so it picks up some of that fuzzy stuff and then it won't be too rough on your paper. So that's also an option. Less aggressive tape? Yes. Okay. So now all I have to do is trace and I'm going to do the dark green first, the asparagus, the asparagus color, eat your veggies. Um, and I'm gonna go for it. So. The best way to have asparagus other than brush lettering pens is on a grill. I agree. Because just plain, they're not very good. That is so true. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry if you love asparagus. I had to learn to love it. Um, when you were doing this, 
because we are drawing this so big, so this is a nine by 12 piece of paper. So it's a big piece of paper that you're working with. I would suggest breaking down your stroke, your letters into different strokes. So I go through that, then that's why we go through the foundation strokes. Um, that way you're not doing it all really fast and you cramp up. And because the letters are so big, it's hard to do it all in one stroke. So I'm gonna break that up. And then thick on the down, then on the up. So my O. When you are doing this, you will notice that I might have to stop at times like that. So I know that I have a curve like that and my hand cramped if I were to do this whole thing in one stroke. So I'm gonna lift off because I know that's a good spot to lift off. And then if you want, this is not cheating. What do I say, Keenan? Work. Oh, oh, I know it's work harder, not <laughs> no, harder. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. He didn't make funny because I mixed it up. Work smarter, not harder. Is you because you already have your template and you know what you're drawing. If you don't like drawing this way, just draw. What did I do? Did I have a curve? Yeah. Draw this way. And then just connect it. Like that. So you that is work working smarter. Okay. There's so many lights here, so it's hard for me to see. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going thin on the up. What an interesting problem. There are so many lights, which is making it harder to see. Because usually I do this in the dark, oh. and then only this is the only light source. That's cool. So right now there's so many lights coming at me. Okay, so thick on the down, thin on the up. The other part that I'm just gonna keep talking about while I'm doing this, is if you are new to brush lettering or just lettering in general, I'm really excited that you are giving it a shot. These pens are something to get accustomed to. So if you are getting frustrated and this is your first project with us, I said it before, but I suggest going through the foundation or the, the foundation strokes, but then the beginning lettering series. And the other thing that you can experiment with is I is a few different tips. You will notice that my light box is angled a little bit. So I'm right-handed and I like to angle my paper rather than drawing straight up and down because I, I feel like I can't really see as well. So it's easier for me to angle, I'll angle it a little bit more. And that way I can see what I'm doing. So thick on the down, thin on the up. So you'll notice I took that Y in two different strokes. If you are left-handed, I'm gonna talk to you for a second. Left-handed people, angle your paper this way, or I've seen some people literally draw at an angle like that. Whoa, that feels crazy. That, uh, I'm trying to become left-handed. That also works if I were right-handed, or let me see. I wonder, tell me, you should comment if anyone's right-handed and then they draw like this. Ooh. Can you push the paper up a little higher? Can so they can, see you? Yeah. It's hard, it's hard Sorry. when you switch left. <laughs> I'm switch, I'm like doing, whoa. Okay, maybe that's kind of cool. <laughs> but I was gonna say, if you're a lefty, Angle your paper slightly if that will help. And the other thing that I want you to experiment with is the part, the way that you attack the letter. And this is also for righties, so this is a good tip as well, is think about how you're attacking the letter. Some lefties are underwriters, which makes the downstroke harder, and some are overwriters, which might, ooh, I'm cramping. What I suggest to do is find a happy medium and kind of come from the side and then also play with your grip. So I tend to grip a little bit higher when I'm left-handed. Is that okay, Keenan? Or maybe you could just do overhead. I'll just be doing overhead mostly. Right? Okay. So I'm still thinking thick on the down, then on the up, come across. And you, did you notice how I lifted up my hand? Because especially 
especially when I'm left-handed, which is all the time, um, is I, it's hard to do this all in one stroke. Ooh, and my hand cramps. So that's why if you lift up, it's the same thing as you'll notice here, is I'm lifting up to relieve that uh, pressure and it will be easier for you. So those are hopefully some tips that will help lefties out there. Because yes, you can do it. And it was on our live for the hello project that you'll see Heidi, who works with us, is left-handed. And she did that as well. So I'm taking it stroke by stroke. Bloom where you are planted. So that one is a really big stroke. So this is the same thing. I did that all in one and then I lift it up and I'm gonna do the C part of my P. So when I do that, I'm gonna overlap a little bit so I can make sure that it's a smooth transition. So thin on the up, thick on the down, one stroke. I'm gonna do all of that in one stroke. So that's that combination stroke that you can do. I'm just gonna do it like that. And T, E. So thin on the up, thick on the down. I'm gonna stop right there. So again, I'm going to do this. Let's see. I'm trying to think if it's easier for, yeah. Do this all like that. And then connect up. Okay. Oh, cross my T. So, hmm. when I'm crossing my T's, I would suggest the, this, it won't bleed, to, or it won't smudge too much. But what I tend to do is you can either create, have a guard if you're worried about it smudging going to do that. So then you can still cross your T. Like that. Too easy. Too easy. Okay, that is step four. Now the final step is when we're looking at this, so I have, this is my first coat essentially. Now what we're going to do is we're going to think about the details. So the first one, let's see. I want to show you, let's just focus on the lettering first. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you about shadowing. So if you'll notice that I just added a really slight yellow shadow here. And this is something, oh, people liked when I had my show and tell with the E. Oh, nice. Yeah, so on one of a kind, I talked about sh um, shadows and I showed, I brought in a little show and tell this block E. And I was explaining, so when you're thinking about shadows, is that figure out where your light source is. So on this one, my light source is from the top and it's shining on these letters and it's creating a shadow. So that's why all my shadows are on the left. You can decide if you want it's coming from this way. If it was, then all my shadows would be on the right. So that's what you're thinking about with the shadows. I am using, yeah. I just decided to use a light yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add a thin line to the left of all of these. And you can decide also if you want the shadow to be really thick or if you want it to be thin. So I'm just doing a thin one so it just adds a little bit of accent to it. Um, another thing is if you have a light gray or just a, a lighter green, I don't think there's, there might be a slightly lighter green. Um, but add, it doesn't have to be yellow. You can do a light green, you could do a light gray. Just wanted to have a pop of fun. I also sometimes, so my thought, my brain went, do I need one here? It's okay if you don't do it on every single one. So don't get hung up on, is this right or is this wrong? Just add a little bit. Oops. And do not worry about it too much. So if you look really closely, it overlapped a little bit onto my green. Don't worry about that too much because we're gonna do a second coat of this green to make it pop more. 
So on this one, because my light source is coming up here, on these guys, technically the light would kind of be hitting it and it wouldn't create as much of a shadow because it's at the same spot. So what you can do is you can add just a little bit here like that. Okay, so that's the shadow. Then we're gonna go over it. I'm gonna do the um, flowers last. So we're gonna go over it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my, my paper as a guard and I'm just gonna go back over this. And the beautiful thing about these pens is that they are not a solid color when you're drawing them because they're water-based. So you'll notice that they're a little bit transparent. And so I wanted to show how if you add a second layer, it just makes it a little bit darker. So it's not too much different. You can even do a third coat if you want. Um, but this just makes it a little bit darker. And Again, I'm gonna go kind of fast. Maybe we can fast forward through this, Keenan, if you want. It is fun to watch. Yeah. And also, this is kind of good practice. So, because you have your guidelines, so now you can really think thick on the down, thin on the up. And you can, the biggest thing with lettering, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> the biggest thing with lettering is just creating the muscle memory because like I said, that sometimes you go on autopilot and you just draw a letter because that's what you think it looks like. And then I completely understand that it's, it's not intuitive to think about thin on the up, thick on the down. And so you have to create muscle memory just like anything else, like riding a bike especially, you you're probably not gonna be good right off the bat, is you have to create this muscle memory to be able to do it. So if yours doesn't look perfect on the first try, it's okay. One, this is paper. You can throw it away. That's what we say here at LMA. Two, what? That rhymed. I was like, what did I say? What did I say? You said, this is paper, you can throw it away. That's what we say here at LMA. <gasps> I'm gonna tell Sarah. <laughs> wow, I just rhymed. Yeah, you did. Basically a rapper. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Far from it. Um, even though I grew up with that. <laughs> um, what was, it? lost my train of thought. Oh, paper. It's just paper, one. And then like I was saying is that this is something that I don't want you to feel like it has to be perfect, especially if this is your first time and you're going through it. If everyone's was perfect on the first time, I don't think anyone would do this. So you're gaining muscle memory. And then my favorite part is when you have that aha moment, that's what you're working towards is that moment when you're like, oh, I get it or something clicks or you create something for someone and they're like, I love that, that's beautiful. That's what you're going for and why we do lettering. So, okay, that is, this wasn't a number. Oh, this was the final. This is just all the final step. I was like, what number am I on? This oh. is all, <laughs> this is all the final step. This is the details. Okay, so we did that. Now what we're going to do is because I have all this empty space, I just wanted to show you, you can add um, leaves to it and this is a perfect time to also practice the flourishes so as we did infinity and beyond is we practice um, the infinity shape so that's all we're kind of going to be doing here except not the whole infinity you can't do the whole infinity but I wanted to give you an option to practice your curves and there is absolutely no Rhyme or reason as far as are they big, are they small, are they connected? All we're doing is we're gonna take a step back and I'm just gonna draw and kind of fill in the spaces. So I saw I have all this space right here. So these ones I drew little leaves like that. Draw a big one. So these leaves kind of look like teardrop shapes. They're not realistic looking. 
just wanted you to practice the curve. So you can draw your leaves a different way if you'd like. So that fills that space. I have, excuse me, this space right here that I can fill. So when you're doing this, maybe you experiment with is if you'll notice sometimes my lines are thicker. I realize on my final one I didn't do that, but those are things that you can think about is do you want to tell yourself thin on the up, thick on the down. Thin on the up, thick on the down. So all of this is just more ways to practice. And these are just fun little accents that you can add. Again, I have my guard here just in case. Maybe add some right here. You also don't have to do three, you can just do two. This space right here. And you can go to the edge of it if you'd like. I realize I'm not doing that on this one, um, but you can if you want to fill it up even more. Oh, and you'll notice I decided to just freehand this because um, I just wanted to go for it. If you want, you can totally draw this in pencil first and you can go through the same steps and you can, I'm gonna draw a big one. You can draw it in pencil first and then use the light box if you'd like. Like that, let's take a step back. Maybe another one right there. Mm, so then, the other thing is I noticed if you, there's kind of a, a hole right there and maybe right here, is if you want to, you can also, and the reason why I added in this yellow gold is you can, I drew these just little kind of sprouts, I don't know what you want to call them. What do you want to call them, Keenan? I like sprouts. Okay. Is they can, but they also remind me of like the little cherries on the Christmas things. Or the berries. You know, like on Christmas decorations, how they have the red berries. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it makes me think of. Even though they're not red, it's okay. Well, from here, they look red. And they kind of look like birds. Yeah, little birds flying in the distance. <laughs> Especially the way Sarah draws birds, which I love. Um, it's funny. That one looks kind of funny. Oh, well. I'm going to go. Keep going. When I'm looking at that, it looks like eyebrows. I'm, so what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a dot, and then I'm just letting it go at the end. Just kind of filling some spaces in. I think that we would call them on fleek eyebrows. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> okay. Breathe. Is there anything else that I need? Can you do you see any holes? From the top. From the top. Hmm, let me do a little quick inspection. It looks great. Thanks. Yeah? You think we're good? So you could probably, uh, I mean, you can look at this so long. I love when Sarah says that when, once you do a watercolor project, especially with watercolor because you're so in the zone, is hang it or put it on somewhere that you can just walk by it and see it. And like she says, which I love, is that you'll probably love it in the morning because you're so focused in on this that I'm even like, ah, is there anything more I need to do? And I probably just need to take a step back and then look at this tomorrow. And then if I feel like I need to add to it, I can. Um, but... The final thing is literally just slowly and carefully removing it. And you have your own project that you made with us. And it's really cool because you can see I did this once and then I obviously did this again. And so you'll notice that I drew these ones a lot thicker. And so when you're going through this, I'd love to see how you make this your own. Are your lines thicker? Are you, did you decide to angle your letters? Where did you, or did you do different types of leaves? Um, we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Lettering. And in that one, share. Like I said, I wanna see what you guys create, um, where you decide to add your flourishes. Maybe if you did a different quote. Um, but the biggest takeaway from this is just adding little extensions don't get overwhelmed by it because I understand if you look at some people's lettering and 
it just looks like a lot of loops and swirls and curves and you don't know where to start, just start, like I said, with the basics and then you can see where you can add them from there. So I hope you had fun and, and come join us in our Facebook group and say hi. Bye.